Assalamu alaikum, brothers and sisters. Ever heard the conversation between Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, and the shaitan? If you are eager to know what they spoke about, here I present it to you. Shaitan is known to deceive, except when facing Prophet Muhammad. He communicated only truth to him following Allah's guidance. Here is a conversation between Allah's Messenger and Shaitan that sheds light on common mistakes we make in our life. It also offers valuable insights for self-correction. The following narration is included in Muhyiddin ibn Arabi's book called Shajaratul Kaun with the heading Satan's Tricks. Muad b. Jabal reports from Ibn Abbas, One day we were together with the Messenger of Allah, Peace be upon him. We were in the house of one of Ansar. We formed a congregation. We heard a voice from the outside. Oh, the ones inside, would you allow me to enter? I have business with you. Thereupon, everybody started to look at the face of the Messenger of Allah. Peace be upon him. He was the master there and everywhere. He was going to give permission. The Messenger of Allah realized the situation and said to us, Do you recognize the owner of this voice? We said, Allah and his Messenger know best. Thereupon the Messenger of Allah peace be upon him said, It is Satan the accursed. May Allah damn him. On hearing that Hazza Umar said, O Messenger of Allah, allow me to kill him. The Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, did not allow him, and said, O Umar, do you not know that he has permission to live up to a certain time? Do not think of killing him. Then he said, Open the door and admit him, as he did not come on his own, but on Allah's orders. Try to understand what he will say. Listen carefully to what he tells you. The narrator narrates what happened after that as follows. They opened the door, and he appeared in front of us as an old man, cross-eyed and scant of beard, with only six or seven long hairs hanging from his chin. He had a very big head, crossed eyes close to the top of his head, high on his forehead. His head was like a big elephant's head. He had big, thick, hanging lips like those of a water buffalo. Then, he saluted as follows, O Muhammad, peace be upon you. O congregation of Muslims, peace be upon you. The Messenger of Allah. Peace be upon him answered his salutation as follows, O accursed, salutations belong to Allah. Then he said to Satan, I heard you are here on business. What is it? Satan said, I did not wish to come here. I was obliged to. The Messenger of Allah peace be upon him asked, What is that obligation? An angel came from your Lord, who has honor and dignity, and said, Allah most high orders you to go to Muhammad, but you will go to him in humility and abasement and be submissive and tractable. You will tell him how you seduce and mislead sons of Adam. You are going to answer all his questions truthfully, without a single lie. Then Allah said, If you tell even one lie, I will turn you into ashes and blow you away in the wind. I will humiliate you before your enemies. O Muhammad, that is it. I have come to you upon that command. Ask me whatever you wish. If I do not answer your questions correctly, my enemies will make fun of me. There is nothing more difficult than being humiliated by my enemies. Thereupon, the Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, asked, Since you will tell the truth, tell me, who do you hate most among people? Satan answered, You, O Muhammad, there is no one in the whole creation that I hate more than you. Who can be like you? The Messenger of Allah Peace be upon him asked, Whom else do you detest besides me? Satan answered, The young one who gave up his pleasures for Allah's sake. After that the conversation continued in the form of questions and answers. The Messenger of Allah Peace be upon him asked, and Satan answered, Who else do you not like? 
a patient scholar who avoids doubtful things. Then, a patient poor person who neither asks from others the things he needs nor complains. How do you know that poor person is patient? O oh, Muhammad, he does not tell about his need to any people. If a person tells somebody about his need three days on end, Allah will not regard him as a patient person. The affair of patient people is not like that. To sum up, I understand his patience from his state and attitudes and not complaining. Then whom? A rich person that thanks Allah. How do you understand that he thanks Allah? When I see him gaining money legitimately and spending on appropriate things, I know that he is a rich person that thanks Allah. Then the Messenger of Allah peace be upon him changed the topic and asked a different question. What happens to you when my Ummah performs prayers? O oh, Muhammad, I shake and tremble as if stricken with malaria. O oh, accursed, why do you become like that? What happens to you when they fast? I have my hands and feet tied until they break their fast. What happens to you when they perform Hajj? I lose my wits, I go mad. What happens to you when they recite the Quran? I melt like lead turning to hot liquid in the fire. What happens to you when they give sadaqa? I become terrible then. I am torn to pieces as if the generous donor took a chainsaw and sawed me into two pieces. The Messenger of Allah peace be upon him asked the reason. O oh, Abu Burra, why are you torn into two pieces with a saw? Thereupon Satan said, I will tell you. There are four nice things in Sadaka. 1. Allah gives the blessing of abundance to the wealth of the person who gives Sadaka. 2. He makes people love that person who gives Sadaka. 3. Allah makes the Sadaka, he gives a shield between him and hell. 4. Allah drives away distress and troubles from him. Then the Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, asked the devil questions about his companions. What do you say about Abu Bakr? Iblis gave the following answer. He did not obey me even before Islam. How will he obey me now? What do you say about Umar ibn Khattab? I swear by Allah, I ran away whenever I saw him. What do you say about Uthman? I am ashamed in front of him. Even the angels of Ar-Rahman are ashamed in front of him. What do you say about Ali Talib? Oh, if I could just be safe from him, if he would just let me be. I would let him be, but he will not leave me alone. After asking the questions above and after the answers of Satan, the Messenger of Allah peace be upon him said, Praise be to Allah who has blessed my people with such felicity and cursed you with such negativity until that appointed time. When the accursed heard that statement of the Messenger of Allah, he said, Alas for you! Alas! What felicity for you people! How can you feel there is safety for them as long as I exist? I enter their very veins, their very flesh, and they cannot even suspect, let alone see or feel me. I swear by Allah who has given me time until doomsday that I will seduce them all, the intelligent and simple-minded, the learned as well as the ignorant, the devout and the sinner. None will be safe from me except the true servants of Allah. Thereupon the Messenger of Allah peace be upon him asked, Who are the true sincere servants of Allah according to you? O Muhammad, do you not know that whoever loves his money and his property is not a sincere slave of Allah? Whenever I see someone who does not love his money and his property and does not like being praised, I know he is a sincere slave. I run away from him, I need many servants, and I have many servants. I am not alone. A person who loves wealth and being praised and is adherent to worldly desires is the one that obeys me the most. Do you not know that love of wealth is the biggest sin? O Muhammad, 
Do you not know that love of being a leader is among the biggest sins? O Muhammad, do you not know that I have seventy thousand children? I assigned each of them to different posts. Each of my seventy thousand children has seventy thousand Satans serving under him. I sent some of them to scholars, some of them to young people, some of them to sheikhs, and some of them to old women. There are almost no differences of opinion between your young people and us. We get on well with them. Children play happily with my children. I sent some of my devils to devout and pious people. They transform them from one state into another. They take them from one hill to another. Then those people try to curse reasons. Thus I remove their sincerity. They worship without sincerity, but they are not aware of it. After that, Iblis started to tell the story of a priest that he deceived. O oh, Muhammad, do you not know that Barsisi, the priest, worshipped Allah for seventy years sincerely? As a result of his worshipping, he was given such a state that ill people recovered when he prayed for them. I always followed him. He committed fornication and killed a person. Then he became an unbeliever. Allah tells the state of such a person as follows in his book. Their allies deceived them, like the evil one, when he says to man, Deny Allah. But when man denies Allah, the evil one says, I am free of thee. I do fear Allah, the Lord of the worlds. After that, Iblis mentioned some bad traits. He narrated how he benefited from each of them. Telling lies. O Muhammad, do you not know that lying is from me and I am the first liar? Whoever lies is my best friend. Whoever swears to the truth of his lie is my beloved. O Muhammad, do you not know that I swore by Allah and lied to Adam and Eve? I said, Surely I am a sincere adviser to you. I do it because perjury is the entertainment of my heart. Backbiting, tail-bearing. As for backbiting and tail-bearing, they are my fruits and festival. Swearing on Nika, marriage. If a person swears on divorce, even if just once and even if it is on something true, he might be a sinner. If he utters the word divorce, his wife will be haram for him until the truth becomes clear. When they go to bed together, their children to be born up to the day of judgment will be illegitimate. They all will go to hell because of that word of divorce uttered by the man. Prayer O Muhammad, as for those who postpone their prayers, let me tell you about them. When a person wants to get up for prayer, I hold him and give him delusions. I will say, there is still time. You are busy. Take care of your business now. You can perform the prayer later. Thus, he performs the prayer after its determined time. Therefore, his prayer is thrown in his face. If that person overcomes me, I send him a human Satan. Thus, he will prevent that person from performing it on time. If he overcomes me, I try to deceive him in prayer. When he is in prayer, I say to him, Look to the right, look to the left. When he does so, I caress his face and kiss his forehead. Then I say to him, You have done something terrible. Thus I disturb his peace in the heart. You know, O Muhammad, that Allah will not accept the prayer of a person who looks to the right and left a lot in prayer. He throws it in his face. If I am defeated by him, I go to him when he performs a prayer alone. I order him to perform it fast. He starts to perform it fast like a hen picking at grain. If I still do not succeed, I go to him in the congregational prayer. I put a bridle on his head. I pull and lift his head from prostration and ruku before the imam. I make him go to sajda and ruku before the imam. Thus Allah will transform his head into the head of a donkey on the day of judgment because of it. If he overcomes me in it, 
I will order him to crack his fingers in prayer. Thus he will be among those who glorify me. Allah made this conversation available for us to learn and act accordingly. Shaitan's plots work on those who have a weak iman. Let that not happen to any one of us. I ask Allah's refuge for me and every one of you from the shaitan. May Allah guide us to the right path. Amin.